Hello, I am Mudita, and welcome back to Satisfactory. This is episode 21 of the Load Balance playthrough, and today I'm going to tackle electromagnetic control rods. I have most of the alternate recipes available to me. I'm going to utilize the solid steel ingot and quick wire stator recipes. These are great alternate recipes that save on raw resources and power for the steel and makes things very convenient using quick wire for multiple parts. 16 per minute will be much more than I need for storage as these are only needed for particle accelerators using the build gun, but I wanted to use the whole Caterium node. I also finished a very small cooling device factory in the swamp that I'll show off at the end. I'm getting close to having all the parts I need being sent to storage, and then it'll be time to ramp things up for the last factories. I'm going to be using these nodes here. Let me briefly explain how this factory is going to work. Electromagnetic control rods, for being a late game item, are actually really easy to manufacture. I'll be using one normal Caterium node, fully overclocked to be using the full 300 a minute. We're going to turn all of it into quick wire, which is going to get split between the quick wire stator recipe and AI limiters. For the stators, we'll only need 48 iron and 48 coal, which is the reason I've picked this location so I can utilize an impure coal node. I'll then take the iron and coal, turn it into steel, then steel pipes for the quick wire stators. I'll need 160 copper ore being smelted into ingots and then turned into copper sheets for the AI limiters. And the last step is needing four assemblers to turn those stators and AI limiters into our 16 electromagnetic control rods per minute. Let me run through the blueprints. For smelters, I'll need one of the two smelters, two of the three smelters, and two of the four smelter blueprints. For the foundries, I'll only need one of this two foundry blueprint. Moving up to constructors, I'll need one set of this three constructor blueprint, two sets of the four constructors, and two sets of the five constructor blueprint combo. The most complex machines I'll need are assemblers. I'll need four of the two assembler blueprint, and I'll need one set of this three assembler blueprint. Let me get these towers placed and we'll fill them up with all those blueprints. And now that the towers are built, let's go ahead and place all these machines. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up top, work my way down, and then I'll talk my way through building this all up. And now it's time for the belt work. So let's go ahead and just start with Caterium. So the miner is going to be clocked at full 300. For the smelters, we've got eight. We need 100 total ingots. So each one is going to do 12.5. So just copy and paste this. 
get the Caterium Ore up here, I'm just going to extend this. And then we're just going to throw floor hole here. Bring that down and make sure that we are on mark three. Because since we're having 300 ore come up from the miner, so that's mark four. It means we'll have 150 and 150, which means this is going to be 75. Not 75. Let's do the same thing up here. So let's get rid of these. So there's our Mark III, there's the 150, and there's the 275 lights. Perfect! So that is the smelter is done. Moving on to the constructors for the quick wire. In total I need 500 quick wire, and I'm using 10 constructors. So even I can do that basic math. 50 per machine. And let's go ahead and connect the blueprints because these were in two different halves. So I made it so you just need to connect one input, one output, and that joins the two. And power. Okay, so to feed the constructors, this is going to be real easy. We'll just place one here and one here, which means one goes there. And there we go. So since each one only has 50 on there, Mark 1 belts are fine. And even this whole thing is fine because if we work our way backwards, each machine needs 10. So 10, 10, and 10. So that means this line needs 30. That means this line needs 30. So right there at most, it's going to have 60, even though we're only bringing in 50 because this is going to loop back an extra 10. But that means Mark 1 belts are all fine for there. We do need to do a little bit of balancing on the outputs. The quick wire needs to be split between 320 going to the AI limiters and 180 going to the quick wire stator recipe. So let's go ahead and do that up here on the top floor. Let's just delete all of these outputs. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge up these three. Since each machine is outputting 50, we've got our 150 here. So with this 50, I want to split it between 20 going one way, 30 going one way, so that this will have our 180. So let's set that there. Okay, so we're basically just going to do our five-way split. So we go into the merger first, and then from there into the first splitter. So this is where we split it in two. So that right there is going to be our three-fifths. So this side is our three-fifths, so this is what we need to work with. So I need one of them to loop back to the beginning. So let's do, let's do that by doing, let's see, so if we go over one and then two and then if i do the same thing here so up one over two i should be able to connect to the lift and then spin it into the merger we can get our nice little short stubby lifts going for no other reason than i just like the way that they look and there we go okay so there is our return bit so we can just put that into the merger. So that right there 
that's one fifth. And then that's the second. So then we're just gonna put a floor hole here. Make sure the lift is this way. So that means that this right here there perfect so this is our 180 line and that means this one here has 70 since we split this one 20 going that way 30 going that way combine that 20 with the 50 so that's our 70 so this 70 is going to combine with this entire floor because that 70 plus the 250 of this whole floor gives us our 320 quick wire we need for AI limiters. With those split, let's move on to the copper. So with the copper, we do need one power shard to bring us to 160. For the smelters, we've got 160, and we're using six machines. So let's just do the long math. Get it just slightly more accurate. So 160 divided by six machines, divided by the default rate of 30, multiply by 100 for the percentage, and there we go. Get that extra digit in there and a few more there. And we'll just copy and paste these. go ahead and set all the recipes with copper sheets all eight constructors are set to 100 percent and with the aon limiters we need 16 across four machines so just four per So let's just spin this around so that we can bring up the ore from below. So using 160 ore, so that would be 90, 80. Okay. So that is how we get the copper up to here. And then as far as feeding the next two floors, since it's already split in two, let's just bring them up one by one. Since this is right here, put that one there and that one there. This one will continue up to this floor. So we've got 80 ingots being sent into each floor. So we can go ahead and just do this. And there we go. And that is all of the copper sheets done. And for the AI limiters, this should be real easy. So let's just set up the basic belt. Okay, so with the quick wire coming from there, that means one of them is going to come from, uh, there's gonna be A wall hole probably there so we'll make it so that this one this one's gonna be the mark four one, two and that's gonna carry the quick wire make sure that's mark four and the copper sheets is just gonna come from below and we've only got 80 of them so just mark two and with these, we can, let's just flip this one around. Let's 
throw that there. So that's 40 on each floor being made. So we've got 40 into there. And then 80 into there. And there we go. So easy as that. That right there is our 16 AI limiters. So let's work on the iron tower now. So this is on top of an iron node, and this is only going to be clocked to 48. So I also need to run over and clock our coal node to the same 48, because these are both just making steel. And I'll need to create a bus that brings that coal over to here. But let's start on these machines. So as far as the smelters go, we've got two. These need to be making 24 each. So let's go ahead and bring that up. So that's a nice and easy. I don't think this is gonna light. No, of course not. So let's see if you're there. Let's do, I guess, yeah. Hey, there's no clipping, and I didn't have to make any weird angles. It's on the ceiling, so nobody's ever going to see it. So from the smelters, then we feed those into the foundries, making the solid steel ingots. And I need 72, so that's 36 per machine. So for the inputs, one of them is going to be coal. So with that, I know it's going to be coming in from basically that side. So I'm just going to go ahead and we're just going to put this there for now. And then we can go ahead and place this one here. Grab some more plates. Since this only has 48 iron ingots, mark one is fine for that. And that's the inputs for the steel. So moving on to the next floor, we've got the constructors for the steel pipes. And I need 48 pipes across the three machines, so 16 each. And with the input and outputs being lined up, let's just go ahead and place a floor hole here. Mark one is fine. And there we go. I like being able to see the stuff moving around. So we've got our steel pipes. So on to the next floor, we've got the quick wire stator recipe. All three machines are going to be clocked to 100%, so I can just copy and paste those across. So this is where we'll need to bring in the other 180 quick wire. We'll plug that in. 48 steel pipes means that we only need mark one. And then I'll just have to plug in the quick wire, and that will be those all set. And for our top floor, we can finally set the electromagnetic control rods because got all of that made now. It's a pretty easy factory to set up. Grab our two more splitters. The amounts for this final floor are very low, so mark one for everything. So with the staters being built right below, we're going to go ahead and just throw one of our floor holes here. Most likely, I will just create a bus somewhere, probably either here or here, and just have that come out to there and into here. And then we'll be able to move the other quick wire and the AI limiters. Our AI limiters are going to be coming up probably from right about here, and it can just plug in just like that. So then the last step will be to merge up the final two. And then get them over to the train station. So I did think about it and this is just one of those awkward distances where I could put a train, but I'm also only moving 16 per minute, which would be a good candidate for drones. 
but I don't really want to use so many drone ports because I, I do want them in my storage. So if I had a drone port here, it would send them to the storage and then they would get fed to another one so that I could on demand call it for my delivery, which isn't the end of the world. Or I leave a second drone port here. So it takes one back to storage and then the open one is here. Either way, it's going to use more drone ports, a whole lot more power. So I'm going to go back to my old ways and just run a belt bus all the way over there. This is definitely not going to be the only factory here in the Dune Desert. So I'm sure eventually it'll fit in with all the rest of the chaos. But for now, it's going to look a little out of place. But let me go ahead and get that built. I'll get everything connected to power. And then we'll flip the switch and watch it all come to life. The belt buses are all done. So let me show you real quick. So we've got the two lines of quick wire just popping out down the bottom there, coming over to this little tower, being fed into there. This is where the 320 quick wire go. The other 180 line just drops down one floor, runs along the ceiling, joins up with the AI limiters, comes along this short belt bus and looks into the tower here. And then our last few kilometer or mile long belt is right here so it just goes out there uh, the reason it took that route is i was just trying to avoid a lot of nodes so in the future when i surely build towers on those i don't have to move this too much is the hope anyways and now it's time to flip the switch and see how long it takes
And there's the first batch of the electromagnetic control rods. So I'm gonna let this stopwatch run for just a little bit longer. I noticed they flickered off and on real quick. So my guess is they'll be able to stay on pretty quickly here. Yep, they're just staying on, so we are good to go. So that is 16 electromagnetic control rods per minute. Headed down the bus over to the train station for both the electromagnetic control rods and the cooling systems that I have made in the swamp. I added an extra freight platform and rearranged the items that were already being sent back to storage with the train. And I'll show that off. But first, let's head over to the swamp and take a look at the really basic and simple setup I have for the cooling devices. And here we are back in the swamp, right next to our handy aluminum factory. So this location had pretty much everything that I needed. So let me really quickly run through the process of what's going on here. So in total, I needed four things to make the cooling systems. I needed aluminum ingots, I needed rubber, water, and nitrogen gas. This location right here basically had everything but rubber and being right next to the train station, that was really easy to get. So it just made sense to put this here. And let's take a look at how everything's working. So we're just bringing over the nitrogen gas from over there. Uh, it can share the same pipeline. We're still not completely using even one full pipe and not even close to using the full resource well pressurizer over there. We've got the rubber being brought in by train. I need 80 rubber per minute, so that's really easy to load balance. We've got one Mark II belt, which has 120 per minute on there. If we split that three ways, that will be 40 on each of these belts. So we just need to loop one of them back to the beginning and back into the storage container, merge up the other two, and we have our 80 per minute rubber. The load balancing for the aluminum ingots was even easier since I need 90 per minute and each machine outputs at 30. I just needed to regroup three of these together and send them off to the cooling systems and then redo the math and realize that I'm down to 456 available aluminum ingots for future projects. So those aluminum ingots are just being sent into one constructor clocked at 100% to make the 60 aluminum casings per minute we need. We just need to combine those aluminum casings with the rubber. So just a real simple load balance here to get 60 per minute here and 20 per minute headed along that line. We've got the two assemblers each clocked to 100% using the heat exchanger alternate recipe. And each of those assemblers are directly feeding one of the blenders that are then combining the heat sinks, rubber, water, and the nitrogen gas. And then the outputs of both of the blenders are just being combined and being sent to the train station. So let me hop all the way back to the home train station and show you how that looks. And we're back at the home storage and train station. Something to keep in mind with trains, locomotives can only pull so many freight cars. Now they can pull more than the four, but once you add more than four per locomotive, the train is gonna to start to slow down. So even though this train only runs once every 20 minutes, it'll actually do its route, it'll sit here for 20 minutes, and then it'll go and collect everything for storage again because the rates are so low, it doesn't need to be running all the time. Instead of adding more freight platforms for each of the different items, I just started to create sushi belts with a lot of these because the rates are so low. With the cooling devices, I'm only making 10 per minute, 16 per minute for electromagnetic control rods, six for the fuse modular frames, and six for the radio control units. Since the casings and sheets are being made at 60 per minute, those will continue to have their own freight cars. But with this, I just added smart splitters. Now you do need to add one if you're going to use both of the outputs of the freight platform. You do need to use smart splitters on both of them. So I have them simply set up to have fuse modular frames go one way, radio control units go the other way. Since those are the only two things that should ever show up here, I don't need to worry about overflow and all of that. I just needed to add that before the rest of the system and I was able to leave all of that load balancing the way it was before. 
These are exactly the same setups, just laid out ever so slightly differently. To get six per minute on each of these belts going to storage. So the way that I did the load balancing for these two was really simple. Since I have 16 electromagnetic control rods, I just took a Mark 1 belt, so that's 60. Split it three ways, so there's 20, 20, and 20. Send 40 of it back, we've got 20 here. So if I split the 20 on this belt five ways and recombine four of them, that will give me my 16. And then I just need to send one fifth back to the beginning. The load balancing for the cooling systems is even easier. We do the same Mark 1 belt right out of the storage container. Splitting it three ways gives us 20 on each of these belts. And then from that, I only need to split that in half. So 10 go that way, 10 go that way. And we have them all merge back here, going back into the storage container. And then we have our 10 headed to storage. I now have 16 electromagnetic control rods and 10 cooling systems per minute headed to my storage. With smart splitters sending the overflow to awesome sinks, that is mission complete. I can now turn in that milestone and start researching more hard drives to get the alternate recipe I want to use for turbo motors because that will be the next and final part that I need to build and send to my storage. And then we can really start ramping things up. So look forward to that and thanks for watching.